Hello everyone and welcome to Island Technologies presentation today on Draytech Hotspot Portal and Wireless App. My name is Java and I'm a technical sales specialist here at Draytech Australia New Zealand. In today's session, we'll start by looking at the Hotspot Web Portal in Draytech routers and the various options which are available to customize it which includes login methods and the landing page that guests will see when they connect to your Wi-Fi. We'll also look at what user information can be gathered and what restrictions can be put in place. After that, we'll uh, talk about the Draytech Wireless app, which allows setting up and managing a Wi-Fi network using your smartphone. And we'll run through the setting of mesh networks using the app. So let's start by looking at the Hotspot Web Portal. A Hotspot Web Portal is a convenient and configurable gateway for customers and clients of a business to access the internet through the company-provided data network. When connecting to the Wi-Fi, users are presented with a welcome page with terms and conditions to accept before access to the internet is granted. Various authentication methods are available which require users to provide social media and other details before they can access the internet. And the welcome page can also be used to market and promote your business. Some of the benefits of using a hotspot web portal include providing internet access for guest users while also advertising your business perhaps linking to your company homepage, an online survey, or displaying a promotional message. Terms of use can be displayed before visitors can use the service. And you can also grow your mailing list for marketing promotions by requiring your guests to leave their contact details or social media account details before they can use the internet services. The Hotspot Web Portal can use various authentication methods to meet your business needs, including Facebook or Google Login, SMS pins, voucher pins, and Radius. It's also third-party service compliant. Uh, for instance, you can use Purple Wi-Fi for authentication and services to provide a corporate image for your company. Draytech Hotspot also supports external captive portal authentication you can keep using the Wi-Fi marketing solution you like. Next, the Hotspot Web Portal allows you to use quota management to limit the bandwidth and the number of sessions available for each user. The next feature is per subnet or SSID policy. Each router can have up to four profiles, each with different authentication and landing page settings. Each profile can point to different LAN subnets or Wi-Fi SSIDs. Another feature is server bypassing. Here, whitelist rules can be set up for specific NAT rules, destination domains, IPs or ports, and source IP to bypass the captive portal without affecting the local services. Let's take a look at web portal access methods. The first portal access method is to skip the login process and go directly to the landing page. This, of course, is the simplest entry method. When users connect to the hotspot web portal network, they're not required to log on, provide any details or accept any terms. They're simply redirected to a specified website or a customizable notification message. That can be a welcome message from you or your company's own website, for instance. The next option to access the portal is click through. In this method, there is no login, authentication, or personal details required. Users are directed to the Hotspot Web Portal welcome page with a link to the terms and conditions that they can read through. You can set your own TNCs to suit your requirements. The user has to click the checkbox on this page 
to accept the terms and conditions before they gain access to the internet. The next portal access method is to use the various hotspot login options in the router's menu. Here, users can log in using Google or Facebook before they get access to the internet. That link down at the bottom goes to the Draytech knowledge base for more information on this topic. I've included that in the description below. Another option available is to use SMS logins. Here, users provide a valid mobile phone number to receive a single-use PIN code to get internet access, which is sent as an SMS text from the router. Another option along the same lines is to use email instead of SMS. Here, an email will be sent to the user with the PIN he can use to gain access to our network. A more convenient method at some locations, such as at a hotel, is to use the PIN with voucher method. The application note linked down the bottom here provides detailed instructions. I've included that in the description below. To use this method, a database must be first set up on an attached USB drive. The pin vouchers are then generated and stored on the USB drive, where they can be printed and handed out to guests. Now here's a few examples of vouchers. It includes the PIN code to access the Wi-Fi network, as well as the details such as uh, expiry time, number of devices, and session limit. The last login method is to use a RADIUS server. You'll need to specify the RADIUS server where the user details are located. More information on how to configure this option is available in the Knowledge Base Article 5397 shown here, which has been linked below as well. Now, something I mentioned earlier is the ability to redirect to third-party services such as Purple Wi-Fi. I've included a link to the KBE article down the bottom there in the video's description if uh, you'd like more information on this one. Okay, so now that we've looked at the various ways your guests can log into the Draytech hotspot portal, let's have a look at the information collected. Users' information allows a database to be created for collection and analysis of usage of the hotspot portal. The type of information collected includes the profile that was used to access the portal, the login method used, and some additional data such as marketing statistics. To use it, the hotspot database must be first set up. This is similar to what is done to set up the PIN voucher code described earlier. The type of information collected includes the current status of each user, the profile that was used to access the portal, the login method used, local IP address, and the MAC address. If we click on one of those usernames here is uh, what we're going to see. You can see up the top where you have their email address and phone number. In the middle are the different devices used with that login. And down the bottom, you can see when and how often they connected and how long they were online for. Now, let's talk about the Quora management feature. Quota management is a valuable feature that enables admins to restrict clients' internet usage. You can limit the time they can stay connected, the number of devices allowed per account, reconnection time, bandwidth, and session limits. Under the Hotspot Web Portal Quota Management menu, the first option is expired time after first login. 
This feature allows setting an expiry time for connected users. The default is 5 hours, and once they hit the limit, they get kicked off. Next is device allowed per account. This one limits the number of devices they can use to connect. In reconnection time restriction, you can set a time limit before they can reconnect. Keep in mind, if you're using expired time after first login, you'll need to set this up as well. Otherwise, they'll be able to reconnect straight away. In the bandwidth limit section, you can limit bandwidth on the hotspot. The default setting is unlimited. It is recommended to set a download and upload limit here to avoid congestion, particularly if you expect to get a lot of users. And finally, down the bottom, you can set a session limit. The default setting is unlimited. And as per bandwidth limit, it's recommended to enter something like 1000 to avoid network congestions. Now here's a video with more detail about how to set up Hotspot Portal to use Facebook and Google Logins. Hello everyone. With Draytech Web Portal, network administrators can now set up a Vigo router as a hotspot with authentication. The social media login authentication method allows users to log into the network by using their Google or Facebook account. In this video, we're going to show you how to create the Google and Facebook app, generate the app ID and app secret. These will be used in the web portal setup. We will start by creating the Facebook app for web portal authentication. First, go to https colon double forward slash developers.facebook.com forward slash and click on my apps to log in with your Facebook account. You will now need to create an app ID. After the security check, we can set up our Facebook login. Click on the web button, put in your site URL and click on save to apply. Then go to setting then basic, enter your available privacy policy URL and click save changes. Click your app ID, enter https colon double forward slash portal dot draytech dot com colon 8043 in valid OAuth redirect URIs at client OAuth settings. Then click save changes. Go to the dashboard. The app will be activated after you have enabled the app. You can get your app ID and app secret on this page. Click the show button to reveal the app secret. The app ID and app secret will be used in Vigo Router's web portal setup page. We will introduce it later. We will now create the Google app for web portal authentication. Go to https colon double forward slash console.developers.google.com Log in with a Google account, then click Select a Project, New Project, enter a project name, then click Create. Click on the project name, then go into the project settings. Click API and Services, Dashboard, click Library, then we're going to search Google Plus API. Select the Google Plus API. Press Enable API for this project. Go to Credentials tab. Click Create Credentials. Select OAuth Client ID. Click Configure Consent Screen. Enter the project name and privacy URL.
Click Save to apply. Choose Web Application as Application Type, then enter Credential Name. Set Authorized JavaScript Origin as HTTPS colon double forward slash portal dot colon 8043 for HTTPS or HTTP colon double forward slash portal dot colon 8001 for HTTP then click create once completed the client ID and client secret will be displayed this information will be used in the Vigor Router's web portal setup page. We will now configure the Hotspot web portal in the Vigor Router. Go to Hotspot web portal, profile setup menu, and click on an available index. It takes five easy steps to set this up. Enable this profile and enter any comments. For portal method, select various hotspot login. Choose HTTPS for captive portal URL. Now select Facebook and Google as login methods. For Facebook, enter the app ID and secret that we created previously. Do the same for Google. Enter the app ID and enter secret created earlier. Click save to apply changes. The next step is to set up the background. The background color can be customized or a background image and logo image can be added. In the login page setup, the web portal page can be customized. Web page information such as the welcome message as well as terms and conditions can be added. The next step is to configure the whitelist if required for the profile to allow specific clients to access the internet. You can also configure which websites can be visited without requiring login authentication. The last step is to select which interfaces will be used by this hotspot profile. Click finish to save the settings. After completing the configuration, we can now test that the web portal works as expected. Now users will need to log in with their social media accounts to use the internet. They will have a choice of using either Facebook or Google as shown here. We now look at the Draytech Wireless app which can be used to set a Wi-Fi network using Android and iOS devices. The Draytech Wireless app is available for download from the App Store for iOS devices or Google Play for Android. I'll be sure to include those links in the description below. The Draytech Wireless app allows you to set up a mesh network from scratch, uh, to monitor all mesh nodes, get the topology overview, check on all of the Wi-Fi clients, change SSID configuration for all nodes, and add TR069 settings to those nodes. There are three key operation modes for the wireless app. First up is the AP mode. This is most commonly used. Here, the Vigor AP acts as a bridge between wireless devices and a wired Ethernet network, allowing data exchange between them. Major Pro is less performance DK, while cons include limited wireless coverage and the need to connect your AP to the network with a cable. Next is the Range Extend Mode, where the Vigor AP acts as a wireless repeater. It can be a station and an AP at the same time. Pros include compatibility among different brands and the ability to extend wireless coverage, while cons include uplinks that cannot self-heal, plus the need for manual installation and some loss of performance as well. And finally, the mesh mode, which is all the rage nowadays. This mode allows up to eight access points to form a mesh group 
a mesh network creates a set of links automatically and calculates the optimal path through the wireless network back to a wired mesh route. Pros include easy installation, self-healing uplinks, and the convenience of extending wireless coverage. On the flip side, there's no compatibility among different brands, and there's some performance decay compared to the AP mode. From the current Draytek range, App compatible APs are the AP802, the AP903, the AP960C, the new one, the outdoor AP918R, and the AP1000C. Please note that uh, AP802 supports mesh node only. You can't set that one up as a mesh route. Now let's discuss how to create a mesh network using the Draytech Wireless app. So first up, we have a router, and we want to add an AP to increase the Wi-Fi coverage. So we add an AP903, and set it up to be the mesh route using the Wireless app on a smartphone. Open the app, then select Quick Start Wizard, Tap on search to scan for the SSID of the AP903 and once found, click on it. Then enter the Wi-Fi password which you'll find located on the back of the AP903. Click next and on subsequent page, select mesh route as the operation mode and assign a group name. Moving to the next page, Specify the Wi-Fi name or SSID and the password. Then hit Next. On this page, you'll need to enter an admin password. Then on the last page, verify the settings and click on Finish to finalize the mesh root settings for the AP903. Now that we have a mesh root, Let's add a mesh node to this network. In this diagram, we're deploying another AP903 to become a mesh node. Open the wireless app and select Add Nodes. Much the same as adding a root, the app will then search for available APs. After selecting the right one, it's a good idea to give it a name to make it easier to identify. For example, entertainment room, master bedroom, and so on. Uh, this one we've called Vigor AP 903 node A since we're only going to have the one node anyway. Then click Apply, check the settings, and click on Finish to save. After the mesh network configuration is complete, you can view the devices on the mesh network by clicking on the devices icon. The client's icon will show all client devices that are connected to the mesh network. Now, here's a video showing pretty much everything we just discussed, but using QR codes on the bottom of the APs instead of manually typing in the Wi Fi passwords. If you'd like to watch it again, I'll include a link below.
Okay, so to summarize, today we looked at the Hotspot Web Portal in Dratech Routers and the various login methods you can have your guests use and the landing page that guests will see when they connect to the Wi-Fi. We looked at what information uh, can be stored in database and what you can do with Coders. Then we looked at the Dratech Wireless app and ran through how to set up a mesh network using it. Okay, that's it for me, but please stay tuned. Staff will be answering questions in the live chat on the right of your screen for the next five minutes. If you're watching this after the live premiere, please comment below or call or send us an email instead. You'll find more information about Draytech products on our website at www.draytech.com.au. Feel free to email us at sales at or give us a call on 0298 3888 99. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. And if you'd like a notification of new premiere videos we're about to launch or any time we put up a new video, please give the bell a click too. I appreciate your time and thank you for joining us today. Stay safe out there. Goodbye.